to you by viewers like you. Thanks for your donations. AFO was my first con that, I, that I've worked on, so it was my first experience with everyone. So I don't know, it's just AFO is different than I think most cons, and um, I can touch base a little bit more to like fans. And I haven't been in too many too many cons, but it is uh, you know it's it's different. I mean, I meet a lot of people that I think. They say I've changed their life and stuff like that, so it's just good. I, I, I meet crazy fans, like one fan I met here is pretty crazy. I meet, uh, I mean, like crazy in a, in a crazy way, like in a good way, you know. Like I'm a little crazy in a good way. Um, and then I, I meet just a bunch of different people. So I mean, being at cons, I think it's a good way to kind of reach out to your fans and you know let them know you're still here. And honestly, just uh, appreciate that you still have fans, because you know what would a con be if you didn't have fans? You wouldn't be here. You, know. so you say that you're a little bit crazy, so was, yeah. you like that as a kid? Were you a little... That was a little crazy. A little crazy. Yeah, doctor thought I had ADD, but you know, it's a little crazy. Mm -hmm. I acted up my whole life, so that's why I wanted to be an actor. Because my mom and dad were like, you're acting up. So I was like, I'll just be an actor. She, they tell me all the time I'm acting up. So you know, that's why I wanted to be an actor. I was modeling like around 12, 12 years old. I was modeling. I modeled for a company called Olive Pit Productions, and um, I had a character name. My character's name was Jason Barnes at the time, not Jason Frank. And we, they sold like posters, t-shirts, and all that. I did a big photo shoot. I got paid good money too. And then it was in all the teen magazines, like when I was 12 years old. But the problem is like everybody ordered stuff, you know, because they knew me, and the company just shut down. So it like took everyone's money and stuff like that. Yeah, so Olive Pit Productions no longer was never, I don't think, a company in the first place, but uh, it was, uh, I was like doing skateboard and stuff, and then I was uh, in my karate gi doing sidekicks and, you know, flying sidekicks, stuff like that. So it was just kind of, uh, you know, on a skateboard type of thing, you know, like model posters, you know, teen stuff. Um, and then from there, uh, I auditioned for Power Rangers when I was about uh, 18, 19, somewhere in there. And then, uh, you know, then got the part and then that was it. My first day on set, everyone was nice, and it was it was a good experience, but uh, it was different, you know. Like doing fight scenes were completely different than fighting for real. Like I was hitting stunt guys, and they're like, "Oh, you don't have to hit me, man. This is the movie." So I had to learn to kind of adapt and make changes and stuff like that. I just learned, you know, camera angles. I paid attention to camera angles, directing. Uh, I, I paid attention to a lot of a lot of ways you can shoot movies and television shows and stuff like that for, you know, an inexpensive way. Because Saban was really good at that, using camera angles and, you know, making monsters look appear that they're bigger and stuff like that. So I just learned a lot of different things. No, I don't think any, any prank I pulled I regret. <laughs> um, I pulled a lot of different pranks, but um, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I can't think of one particular one that I pulled <laughs> that I kind of regret, but I pulled a lot of different I did feed Dave a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a big fly in it. You know, I put a big Australian fly in the sandwich and I just walked up like, he was way filming on set, so I walked way over there. I was like, hey man, I made you a sandwich. He's like, oh, thanks man. And I, I don't know, anyway. So uh, he ate the sandwich with, and when he ate it, there was a pretty big fly in it. So he ate it and then uh, I didn't say nothing afterwards. But I, I told him, uh, I told him after. I just talked about that not too long ago with him. Oh, I told really? him, yeah. he He's called me a name that I can't see on TV. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was it. And then, you know, the other prank where I put my butt in Steve's face, you know, and woke him up a little bit. But uh, one time we were filming the movie and uh, Steve was sleeping and I took my pants down and I put my butt in his face, right? And, uh, but he was sleeping and my butt was like a... <laughs> But he didn't wake up. And uh, David and everyone, Johnny, ask Johnny, we, they were rolling. And when he woke up, I just didn't really like tell him. You know, normally I do, I'm like, and then finally I got mad. So I put my butt in your face, dude. And he's like, no, you didn't, no, you didn't. And then Johnny was just like. Other than that, you know. And then, uh, you know, with the mistletoe, that was, uh, you know, another prank. And I think the biggest bloop that will never ever make TV was uh, when me and Amy were doing the, uh, we were like under the mistletoe of the Christmas episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, I told you guys that story. Yeah, I was, uh, 
under the mistletoe, and she's, we're supposed to like kiss. She's supposed to be like, Tommy, you know, under the mistletoe. So I was like filming, and we were, she was under the mistletoe, and she's like, Tommy, we're under the mistletoe. I'm like, oh yeah, right. And I took my pants off and dropped my pants to my <laughs> But I just, I had underwear on, but I just stood there with my pants low. I was like, yeah, awesome. And the cameras were still rolling. People were like, cut. What are you doing, man? What are you Amy was just cracking up. That was probably like my funniest bloop. I remember that one. The good old mistletoe. Other than that, that was about it. Burn Desire was a film that I wrote. Yeah. I directed that film. I starred in that film. Um, I jammed on that film. I did like 60 setups a day. I uh, shot that film in 18 days. We shot out in the desert. Um, and, you know, it was a, something I wrote. It was kind of a crazy film, but, uh, but it got caught up in this real estate. Uh, the guy that owned the project passed away, so it got tied up into his estate. And we were like in lawsuits with the movie, so that movie's gone. That movie's just dumped off. But we filmed it, we did it. It was a good movie. And, uh, what was it about? Um, the premise of the story, you know, because most movies really aren't about much. So I wrote this movie about a guy who, who's got a lot of troubles, and uh, he's he, his goal in life is just to go eat lunch on Jim Morrison's grave in, in Paris. But um, but he's dealing with a lot of like demons and stuff that he's dealing with like inside his head. So he's got this uh, the uh, his inner conscious called the Sandman, which is uh, kind of controls his mind a little bit. And so he just kind of, a, I, I think it was more of a, a film dealing with uh, everyday struggles that people deal with. Um, and then, you know, he got shot in the movie and, um, you know, he just kind of ended up passing away. But it was just, it was just kind of like a story about, you know, when you read stories, you're like, it was one of those independent story type of things. You had to see it to really, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, I was writing that film. I was writing 716, uh, and that you know that film just never really, I never really took it off. I mean, it was a full script and it was ready to go. In Hollywood, everything's always ready to go. We got stuff that's ready to go all the time, but the problem is money gets held up. I mean, um, I remember uh, I, I signed a three-picture deal with, uh, oh man, what was that movie called? It was anyway. It was a movie with. Um, the second unit director of Indiana Jones, Jesse Johnson, did it. And uh, it was a really good film. It was kind of like a Mel Gibson type of film. While well, I signed the deal, uh, Jason Siegel was in a lot of people. I did the table read and he came out that day and was like, okay, the money fell through. So it just kind of like dropped through. So there's a lot of that going on. You know, I had like an NBC deal too to develop my own show and just lots of stuff and um, that just kind of goes through and falls through. Uh, NBC contacted me. Lori opened in at one time and wanted to develop their, my own show. So Saban was like, yeah, well, you know, if you're going to go, you know, do a show, go for it. And um, I got out, I got another deal, but Saban wouldn't let me out of my contract. So it was kind of like one of those things where I was tied into two contracts and stuff like that. So it was just more of a contract issue and a control issue you know, for their actors wanting to control everything we did. Yeah, we shot some scenes. Um, in Atlanta for that. I'm still waiting on Dawn to finish the rest of the film, but um, we shot some scenes on that. Sci Fighter 2 is supposed to come out. I mean, it's supposed to, we're supposed to finish it. Um, and I'm just waiting on Dawn again, waiting on the money people. I kind of took a, a twist on, on different stuff. I mean, I own companies, you know, I own a clothing line on UFC called Jesus Den Tap, and uh, I represent a lot of UFC fighters and stuff like that and um, really I just in the last year and a half I took my time to train you know to do MMA um, get into some good fights get on some good cards and then uh, do that for a while and then that always like turns around and producers you know it's just one of those things where a lot of uh, producers are hiring MMA actors or MMA stars anyway so I was gonna pretty much dedicate you know some time into doing mixed martial arts so I kind of uh, faded away from the TV business for a while because I was training and all that stuff. And um, my TV business was to be on TV and fight. So that's what I wanted to basically do. But then I got this injury, so yeah. So it sucks, so.
all those loyal, dedicated fans I have. You know, the 10 years that, I, that I've worked on the show, I meet a lot of people that know me. So no matter what industry I go into, if it's like clothing industry, I, all those fighters know who I am. You can't buy fans. You know, I mean, you can't. I mean, you know, they're there or they're not. So either you have fans or you don't have fans. So that's why I come here, so you can appreciate that you do have fans still. And so when did you start getting into acting? Like, when did you, like, go out to audition and... Um, I did my first adult film at the age of 12. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, probably like, <laughs> and cut and edit, no. Um, I, I was modeling like.